Check, check. We're going to start in two minutes. We're going to start in two minutes, so get ready. Two minutes, and we're going to start. Thank you. Like it. Everybody gets quiet at the right time. Perfect. You guys are well prepared. Good morning. Welcome to the draw for the 162nd annual Queen's Plate. Yes, the race that has been around longer than the Kentucky Derby. Just in case you didn't know. Go ahead. Do it. Yes. On behalf of Woodbine Entertainment, welcome. And when I say welcome, I truly do mean it this year because Last year, I didn't get to see all these beautiful faces, and I know some of you are still covered up by masks, that's okay. We just ask that uh, when you're at the table, you're fine to not have them on, but once you get up, we ask that you please uh, keep your mask on. That'll be it for me in terms of COVID protocol. But uh, yeah, thanks for joining us here today. You're gonna get a free breakfast, which is always a lot of fun, right? Uh, some drinks as well. But uh, we are here to celebrate Canada's most famous race. We talked about the history. There is a ton of tradition as well that goes along with it. And we're going to add to it this year. Of course, last year, things completely different. I didn't see you guys for the draw. I saw some of you. Many of us quarantined inside the studio. Uh, Scott Lynn and I had the draw proceedings, and the trainers were outside in the paddock. But we're all here together, which is nice to see. So we're somehow slowly getting back to some type of normalcy. Now, in terms of plate day itself. There is a lot going on. Not as big as years past for obvious reasons. We get that. But still, we're at 50% capacity. Still a good-sized crowd for the race itself. And the parties. We're still going to have the parties, again, just kind of scaled back. In terms of entertainment, uh, I'll have our CEO, Jim Lawson, expound on this a little bit later on. But we will have uh, Riley James, Rylan James, he tells, I can call him Riley, he says, Rylan James in the house to sing the national anthem. Jim Cuddy's going to perform not one, not two, but three songs, so that's pretty cool. Actually part of the race day event. We have some Olympians in the house. We've got a special one joining us. We'll hear from Kyla Sanchez a little bit later on. Penny Oleksiak, not as good as Kyla, but she's okay. Uh, she'll be here as well to give the official Riders Up call. Uh, by the way, just joking, she's 21. She's already the most decorated Olympian in Canadian history. So she is, yeah, phenomenal. But we all know she couldn't have done it without Kyla. 
just, just letting you know. So yeah, we'll hear from Kyla coming up a little bit later on. So there's a lot in store. Again, we're going to have the usual double draw format. First of all, we're going to have the selection order. And then Kyle and I will have a little bit of fun up here on the stage, and that'll give you guys a chance to discuss where you'd like to start in terms of that gate. By the way, 13 horses. It will be a double draw, which means we're going to go 1, 6, 2, 7, 3, 8. You can figure out the rest. 13 will go on its own. Uh, Kevin Atari's got half the field, I think. So, um, yeah, he's got a pretty good shot. And just think there are a couple more he could have had that actually didn't make it. So what a year for Kevin. So we'll talk with the connections and get to hear from them in terms of this race. And I guess with the race somewhat three, four days away, it's basically the last chance for Mighty Heart to walk the runway, still with the crown on his head. And what a, what a ride, what a race last year, and what a ride it's been in terms Mighty of the ownership. The one Larry Cordes, the, the trainer Josie Carroll, of course, Daisuke Fukumoto, and the glue that holds it all together, right? The pride of Cape Breton, Siobhan Brown. And yeah, this was a phenomenal last year. Uh, not many forecasts of this, number 13. Lucky number 13 at, yes, 13 to one. Just the 12th gate to wire winner in Queen's Plate history. So it's not easy to do, obviously. A lot of these horses, uh, all of them actually, going a mile and a quarter for the first time. So that was quite the effort. And how key is this race in terms of Sovereign Awards? Well, 27th Sovereign Award winning horse after capturing the Queen's Plate. Of course, he went on to become Canada's three-year-old of the year and still the reigning horse of the year. So congratulations once again to the connections of Mighty Heart. And this year's race, wow, wide open. This is going to be so much fun. I can't wait. And uh, there's just so much drama because there's no clear-cut favorite, which makes for a much better race. We've got a bit of everything. We've got some maidens contesting the mile and a quarter classic. We've got a horse that's going from a sprint to a mile and a quarter. You don't see that very often. And I think he's in play. I think he's got a big-time shot. Talking about to Riptide Rock, obviously. And then we've got a horse that's never even stepped foot on synthetic, who again, I think, has got a big shot. I know I saw Mitch Kersner here earlier today. There he is, the proud breeder. Granddad's watching. Don't worry, he's got you. So yeah, all kinds of storylines, but uh, I will save some of them for our CEO, who will now join us. And we'll ask uh, Jim Lawson to come on up and uh, say a few words to officially get this morning started. Jim. Hi, well, I'm uh, going to stay away from horse racing. I'll leave that to the, to the experts. Um, but it's, uh, it's a little over, overwhelming, certainly, to be back here, and great to see your faces again. I'm excited to bring our employees back. They've been great. They've been patient. And uh, as I thought about what I was going to say today, it, it might be a little dry. It's going to be, I said to Kyla, Kyla, I'm going to... This is not going to be about the race, it's not going to be exciting, but people who are here in the audience and uh, many familiar faces, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about horse racing and the future of horse racing and, uh, and where we're headed and, uh, and hopefully leave a, on, a, on an optimistic note. Uh, when, I, when I thought about what to say, you, you think back what we've all been through together starting uh, with March of 2020. I mean, it, it, it just couldn't have been a more sinking feeling, uh, not only for the society, but at, sitting at Woodbine here, what are we gonna do next? It, it was unclear whether we'd get going in 2020. Uh, we, uh, a lot of uncertainty and uh, a lot of phone calls to yours truly from trainers and owners and what the heck is going on and when can we start working out and, we just had no idea, and, and I, I know a lot of you in the audience, uh, particularly the trainers, lived through that. I will say to all of you, um, we wouldn't have got it done without you. Um, the level of cooperation, the social distancing, everything that you guys did to help us get back uh, when we did in 2020 was amazing, and we couldn't have done it without you and with, uh, without the cooperation of all the people in our backstretch, uh, the patience of our owners uh, to, to stick by us. And, and that's, that's going, seems like a long time ago, that's 2020. And, and then this year, 
you know, the same thing again. And uh, people, um, pe we did our part. People got vaccinated. Uh, we had over an 80% vaccination rate in our backstretch. And, and, uh, and, and thank you to everyone. I'm Okay, well, that, no, that's a good omen. We planned that. You see, we, we can fix things. We're on, top of, we're on top of things. We all set? So, you know, I want to thank all of you again. Uh, I'm looking at Sue Leslie and the HBPA and, and the Horsemen's Associations uh, on for both breeds and, and, and our employees and all the horse community and the way we came together. And when we started, you know, in, in 2020, the one thing that uh, when I was interviewed very early on by many people and many radio stations, what's going on? Are we going to have a Queen's Plate? And the one thing we said right from the beginning is we will have the Queen's Plate this year, no matter what it takes. Even if we only run one day this year, we're going to have the Queen's Plate. And... Uh, and we got it done and, and last year, and uh, certainly led to the certainly led to the Mighty Heart story. And uh, uh, what a fantastic uh, story that has been and continues to be. And uh, and last year we so we had the plate last year. Uh, we're having it this year. Uh, we miss the uh, we miss this breakfast last year, which is a, a great tradition for people to come and and uh, and go through this draw the way we did. And and Kyla, uh, we are thrilled to have you as a draw master, and congratulations uh, on the Olympics. Uh, we're all thrilled to have you and excited. So thank you for coming. In terms of the future of racing, I, I, you've heard me say many times we're going to come back stronger out of this, and I really still believe that. It's uh, 18 months later from when we said we're going to come back stronger. This industry has come together uh, in so many ways, and people who have, have worked together at Ontario Racing and, and our work with other racetracks and the Horse People's Association, there has been a lot of give and take, and um, I've seen the industry come together uh, in the last 18 months in ways that it never has before. Our employees, our management team have done a terrific job to think that our wagering is up substantially uh, in light of the fact that much of the period we didn't have bricks and mortar wagering and we've converted people to our online wagering system and, and that is going to make us stronger for the future as we look to the, the participating in, in digital sports betting and integrating our product into sports betting, uh, which I'll, I'll speak to in a minute, but uh, we are going to be stronger and it's through a lot of hard work and a lot of effort of people collaborating and making this a better industry. Regarding sports betting, uh, it, it's a threat to this industry, no question. Uh, we get asked this a lot. Um, in everywhere else in the world, sports betting is, is going to cannibalize the power mutual wagering dollar. Uh, when Kevin Waugh came forward with Bill C-218, there was no protection for the horse racing industry. And uh, I don't have to explain to you the, the threat that that meant in terms of large wagering operations coming in and offering fixed odds wagering on horse racing. It just couldn't be. Woodbine Entertainment stepped forward. We spoke directly to the Attorney General. The federal government agreed to amend it. We had the, the help of the Horsemen's Associations and the Racetracks Canada and people throughout the industry supported this. And the government, federal government did the right thing and amended it to protect the horse racing industry. But we still have this threat. It's coming. It's going to be an open and competitive market. Uh, we're, today we're joined by a couple of tables from OLG. Uh, I'd like to thank them on behalf of the entire industry for your ongoing support and recognition of how important this industry is to Ontario and the thousands of families that rely on this industry. We've had several positive discussions with the AGCO and the OLG regarding sports betting and we look forward to further discussions. We need to play a role in the new sports betting sector. We are Canadian, we are nonprofit, 
our entire mandate is to support horse racing and sustain this industry and the only way we're going to be able to do it is to participate in the sports betting sector and that is what the federal government had in mind we have an extensive technology group innovation group I'll talk in a minute about dark horse but we have the most vast network of off-track wagering which are clear and obvious locations for sports betting locations sports books and we have to ensure that that vast network is there to support sports betting for the benefit of the horse racing industry for the consumer and to make the whole sports betting sector more profitable for the Ontario government and we plan to to roll that out and we will continue to work closely with the regulator to ensure that happens so we need to face the sports shedding challenge head-on we've got the team we're prepared to do it and we just have to ensure that our industry is stronger as a result of sports betting rather than getting cannibalized and we're up for the challenge and we want to participate in an open and competitive market so I'm optimistic about it uh, we've got the team and uh, those big sports betting operators love horse racing they want our product and we'll work to integrate our product into the into these large sports betting machines that are that are going to move into Canada most of them foreign by the way and uh, we need as Canadians to play a role in it and Woodbine Entertainment is maybe the one Canadian entity private entity uh, that can accomplish that I only mention that with all due respect to John Levy who uh, I guess Penn Gaming has bought uh, the score which was the other major player moving into this market we also have a tremendous opportunity right here on our property we have been trying to unlock the value of this real estate for years now keep in mind that we are a company without shareholders we have a nonprofit mandate and we are going to try and generate cash generate cash flow to sustain this industry so people ask all the time why are you doing this we're doing it because the party mutual business model doesn't work and people know that and we've documented that and and those of you who are close to it understand the the difference between party mutual wagering income and the purse monies we pay out and then on operating costs on top of that so we have to look to alternative sources of revenue to sustain this industry and maintain the 35,000 jobs in this province and so we're looking to sports betting and we're looking to develop our property we are prepared now to arrange funding to complete the construction of a go train station on this property it will be a boon for the region it will be a boon for the city the province and it will help the real estate development here mass transit is going to unlock the value of this property what we do need however and this has been the delay in, in getting this done is we need the zoning our board will not approve going ahead with the go train station unless we get zoning that will help pay for that hundred million dollar cost which we've agreed to pay for provided we get the zoning so we're caught right now between the province and the city and we're hoping that though those two levels of government will come together and give Woodbine or this region the zoning around the mass transit that we need to unlock the value so I'm hoping that that will all come together in the near term uh, it it's necessary it's necessary to support jobs in this province to sustain this industry and it will be a boon for this region and so that is going to happen I, I continue to think that uh, the government the two levels of government are going to come together and let that happen and uh, and create the economic momentum coming out of this pandemic that we all need the other topic I want to address is horse supply the vision for us of the development is to always have horse racing at the center of this 683 acre parcel and when we do that horse racing will will grow alongside the most exciting development in this country and it will be great exposure and a great opportunity for the sport of horse racing but we do have a real issue in this province right now and that is horse supply 
with the understanding and the cooperation of the government, the Ontario government, we must work together to address the horse supply shortage that we have, particularly in thoroughbreds. There's simply not enough thoroughbreds in Ontario for us to commit to race 133 days. It's an Ontario horse racing issue that needs to be solved and we must all work together and finally make the tough decisions that need to be made to sustain thoroughbred horse racing in this province. I would also like to thank all the owners in this room because of, because of you and the breeders that uh, are going to sustain this sport. It's a difficult time and we understand how difficult it is, the economics of not only breeding a horse, but owning a horse, and if you breed and own like some in this room, it's even more difficult. And so we're appreciative of that, and we're going to work to create these alternative sources of revenue through sports betting and through our real estate development to ensure that we can sustain this industry for generations. We need new owners. We need new investment. We're having some exciting conversations with companies who specialize in fractional ownership and micro ownership and that is around the corner and hopefully we'll be able to announce that soon in terms of Woodbine's part participation in micro ownership. We also have a bright horizon relative to our digital. Uh, we are a, a technology leader in the horse racing industry. Uh, I think that is well recognized through North America. We have, we've spent five years building a technology and innovation group that is second to none in this industry. We were forced, as I said earlier, to transition our bricks and mortar customers and sports betting to our, our digital technology, and we've successfully done that. But we also need to bring in new fans and a new customer base. Last summer, we launched Dark Horse, a new app, that simplifies horse racing and was a big part of our digital strategy to attract new fans. Over the course of the past six months, we've collected feedback from the customers and now we have revamped our course and it will be introduced this weekend in a new format. And it's one I hope you can share with your friends and, and, uh, and people will start using it because it's the future of this industry to be able to wager on your phone and, and hats off to our innovation and technology group who have really simplified horse wagering. Biggest complaint uh, that uh, you all hear when you bring friends to the races and we hear is that past performances and with all due respect to the Daily Racing Forum, our partners, um, it's, it's often too complicated for that new generation who uh, not only don't have the time but don't really want to go through and, and dissect a racing forum in order to make their selections, nor do they want to lis always listen to Mr. Rosima or Mr. Uh, Porty. Oh, there you are. So uh, it's exciting. Uh, Dark Horse is going to come out this weekend, and, and please download it and give it a try. So there's a, a summary. I, I, those are some sobering topics in some ways, but when I think of sports betting, when I think of real estate development, when I think of how far advanced this company is in technology, the future is bright. And we're excited about it. We are going to lead this industry forward and we have set the foundation for this industry to be around for generations. I'd like to thank you all again for coming and supporting us and helping us sustain this industry and it has been a difficult period but I said it's only because of you guys that we've been able to, to keep going and racing and show the government and the health authorities that hey, we had our act together, we've, we set protocols and our people respected them, and that went a long ways in getting us open in 2020 and this year with phase one of the economy in both, uh, both years we opened up in phase one of the economy, and it was because of the efforts of all the people in the community in Ontario that, uh, that abided by them and respected them. So our future is bright. Thank you for being here today. Uh, best of luck to all of you on Sunday. I'm going to stay away from the, the horse racing topic, but uh, it's an exciting wide open race. It, it will be a great day. Porty has talked about some of the excitement. We're going to keep the traditions, and uh, I'm really excited to have people back finally, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, thank you for coming today, and good luck on Sunday, everyone. Thank you.
All good, all good. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate the shot. That's okay. It uh, comes to the territory, right? You pick some good ones, you pick some not so good ones. Um, this race, a ton of history, obviously. And by the way, a special hello to those of you watching on HPI TV Canada or various live streaming um, social media. Instagram, perhaps. I forgot to mention, by the way, Mighty Heart has his own IG. You know, you're, you know you've made it when, right? So I know he's watching, so hello to Mighty Heart. But um, in terms of this race, we talked about the history, talked about the, trad the uh, tradition. I was just taking a quick peek at some of the stats there. It's kind of hard to believe that our leading riders in terms of the Queen's Plate are guys that haven't ridden for years. Avelino Gomez, the late great, uh, Robin Platts, Sandy Holly, who I know is watching as well. They have four riding victories, and they haven't ridden for so many years. Even the winningest trainers, Love that word, by the way, winningest. We only mention that in sports. Uh, Harry Giddings Jr. has got eight. Roger Atfield has got eight. And then when it comes to owners, uh, Seagram, I mean, they're way out in front. They got like 20 wins, so nobody's ever going to touch that. I shouldn't say ever, but it's going to take uh, quite a long time. So just adds to the intrigue, the drama of the race. And, and Jim touched on a bunch of things, and I just want to mention uh, some of our sponsors because in order for any event to be a success, you've got to line yourself up with the right people. And of course, the OLG, back again, sponsoring the Canadian Triple Crown, this being the first step. Obviously the second leg at Fort Erie and the third leg back here for the Breeders' Stakes. And not taking away from the US Triple Crown, obviously that's a tough feat in itself. They've had more Triple Crown winners more recently than we have. Five weeks, I get it, the traveling as well, but with our horses competing on three different surfaces, to me, it takes a special, special athlete to do that. And uh, Wando still the last to do it back in 2003. So a big thank you once again to OLG, longtime supporters of horse racing. Also like to uh, welcome back and thank David Dunkley, the official Milner of the Queen's Plate, Labatt, Pepsi, Corby, Fitzroy, a bunch more. So we really appreciate you guys being a part of the event. All right, well, what are we doing next, Mike? We're gonna go to, sorry, go ahead. Oh, we got uh, live as it, as, it, as it happens. Okay, so I was going to call an audible, but let's talk about uh, the uh, field this year. So we started out with 125 horses being nominated. Uh, from there, we whittled down the field to 45, made that final sustaining payment on June the 30th. And then we get the horses that are being supplemented because if you take a look at this year's race, going back to that winter book once again, Weyburn, the number one horse, obviously not here, the Gotham Stakes winner, decided to stay in the United States. Uh, the second place, winter book choice, looking at Kevin Attard, and he said, this is the year it's going to change. Uh, Steven, the Coronation Futurity winner, right? We always talk about that jinx. Well, the jinx has been taken to another level this year because Steven not even lining up in this year's Queen's Plate. And then uh, Tio Magico, and I apologize, Gail. I know I've been saying Tio Maico because Tio in Spanish is uncle, and I thought she astutely corrected me and said, no, it's Tio Magico. We hope to see him back on the track soon. So uh, we know that he is as to not a part of today's festivities. So we're down to a field of 13. With more on this, we're going to turn things over to Paul Savalaggio as we're going to meet the starting lineup for Sunday's Big Race. Racing fans will be back on track for the 162nd edition of Canada's race, the Queen's Plate. They'll be cheering on 12 Colts and a lone filly by the name of Money for Row. One of four entrants emerging from the barn of trainer Kevin Attard is coming off a big win in the Woodbine Oaks. But it is Money for Row. Money for Row and Justin Stein have the Woodbine Oaks. Money for Row by a length. Earlier on Oaks Day, a modest field of four locked horns in the plate trial stakes. Three of them now ready for their post positions this Sunday. The experienced Dursky came into the race with two wins to his credit. H.C. Holiday broke his maiden back in June of this year, and the 2020 Bull Page Stakes winner, Avo Man, added the second win of his career. Avo Man in front, a bump there for Truffle King. Avo Man got the advantage. And it's Avo Man coming away in the plate trial from Truffle King H.C. Holiday. And Avo Man with something left by a length, Truffle King. Two lengths to H.C. Holiday. Owner Samson Farm take aim at their sixth Queen's Plate victory with one of two hopefuls. 
Dan Samo. He earned the first win of his career at Churchill back in May. Dan Samo's resurgence again, three rallies and gets it. The maiden, Go Take Charge, was headed at the top of the stretch, but ultimately chased for a solid second place in his last start. And the lightly raced Hadassah was recently third in plate prep action. The Kevin Attard contender won his first race last fall, while his stablemate, Harlan Estate, broke his maiden at Santa Anita a month earlier and got the better of rival Dan Samo last time out. Rail, Dan Samo holding, Harlan Estate flying, Harlan Estate coming, Dan Samo in front, a photo of Keeping with the Atar lineage is Keep Grinding, owned by Kevin's son, Joshua, and trained by his grandfather, Tino Atar. The Colt has never been worse than fourth while sporting a 1-1-1 one, one, one record from five career starts. Keep Grinding from Truffle King at the wire, Keep Grinding the winner. Riptide Rock has raced at Woodbine in two of his six career starts and won them both. The latest, a spirited one on July 16th, where he posted his best speed figures yet. Riptide Rock coming at them on the outside. Riptide Rock, Justin Stein. There's another Queen's Plate eligible winner, and it is Riptide Rock first. Safe Conduct has answered the Queen's Plate call, making the trip north from New York with a Canadian passport and a 2-1-0 record from six lifetime starts. It is Safe Conduct to pull off the upset here. It is Safe Conduct. The second of two Samson Farm competitors is the Gail Cox trainee, Tidal Forces. Prior to a slightly sluggish performance in the Marine Stakes, he won the first two races of his career, including a determined late effort to catch Harlan Estate at the wire. Tidal Forces coming and Tidal Forces on the outside, finishing a tad the better, gets up to win. And the aptly named Take a Chance will do just that in his fourth career start for trainer Catherine Day Phillips. And why not? He comes into the race fresh off the first win of his young career. Take a chance in front. Take a chance is going on to win. Take a chance by a length. The field of 13 for the $1 million, 162nd running of the iconic Queen's Plate. All right, yes, let's hear it for our field of 13. Paul Savalaggio, the voice here at Woodbine. We heard the other voice. Uh, Robert Geller. We're going to speak with Robert coming up a little bit later on. Just want to quickly acknowledge the voice of Woodbine Racetrack is in the house. Uh, how about it for Dan Loisel, please? Dan? All right. So I mentioned Kyla Sanchez is in the house and she is an Olympian. She is an Olympian that did a heck of a job helping Canada win silver and bronze in the pool. She did it in the 4x1. She did it in the 400 medley. And uh, the best part of all, she's from Ontario. She's ours to discover, if you will, and started swimming at a very young age. I asked her if she could teach me because I said, you know, I don't know what the reason is, but us brothers don't do well in the pool. But we, we were okay on the track, but in the pool, we just, so we'll talk about that later. But um, we're going to have you help out with the double draw, if that's okay. Okay, and then we'll get a little bit of a Q&A session. So once again, double draw, if you didn't get it earlier, as per usual, we're going to select the order first. You guys have a chance to talk and figure out where you'd like to be in the gate. Double draw, once again, loading. Um, double load, I should say. One, six, two, seven, three, eight, four, nine. You guys all got it. So I'm going to call on our race secretary to join us here on the stage, Scott Lane, to come on up. And we'll have Kyla join us as well. First bit of business will be to get the selection order. Yep. Come on down. Would you like an official introduction? No, okay, you're good. Perfect, here she comes. Let's hear it for Kyla. Yep. And we will speak with her officially. By the way, I'm so happy she's here because if you guys don't know, Penny is like 6'1". And I'm kind of vertically challenged, so at least this stacks up a little bit better than me trying to talk to Penny. So, okay, so without further ado, we'll let you guys select the order. So, Scott. Kyla, you can, you can, you can uh, speak into the mic if you want, or it's up to you, whatever you want to do. Hi, everyone. Hi, Kyla. <laughs> so this, once again, will determine the selection order in terms of the queen's plate. So you can select one. A random one? 
Do you want to announce or do you, you want me to peek over your shoulder? You uh, see, I couldn't do that if it was Penny, so yeah. Okay, <laughs> first up, H.C. Holiday. Two. Two. So H.C. Holiday connections will select second. Okay, next one, Kyle. Yeah, take that. Right, good. Okay, the next one is Keep Grinding. Five. Lost my job already. Five. <laughs> Dance some mo. Eight. You'd like to dance? Sometimes. <laughs> All right. All right. That's good. Um, take a chance. Three. Three. <laughs> okay. So wait. Hold on. Let's let's just go back because yeah. in the control room we need you to be a, a bit louder. So HC Holiday, you said two. Did you not? Yeah. Okay. Keep grinding five. Yeah, because that way they can keep a track in the control room. I'll be louder, I promise. Come on, step it up, girl. Uh, dance some more. Did you get that one, Mike? Talking to the people in the control room, just dance some more, Demer. What was that one? Eight. Come on, somebody's listening out there. Eight, okay, thank you. And take a chance, we just did. Three. Three. You, guys, you guys are great, I okay. appreciate it. Okay. This is like me in school, see, I'm not paying attention. Okay, next. I will pay attention from here on in. So. Hadassah. Six. Hadassah is six. Money for row. Four. Four. Money for row. Four. Harlan Estate. Harlan Estate is 10. Riptide Rock. There we go. Got your mic now. <laughs> one. One. All right. Got that. Riptide Rock, one. Go take charge. Seven. Number seven. Go take charge is seven. Avo Man. Avoman nine. And tidal forces. Eleven. Eleven for tidal forces. Oh, hold on! You're going too fast. Fast. I will yeah. slow down. Yeah, yours is too quick. They got to type these up as we go along, so we'll we'll give them a chance to catch up. Oh, there you go. We're good. All right. We're good. Okay. This is live, by the Next way. Next one. Dirtsky is 12. You guys can probably figure out the last one, right? Last, but least, safe conduct. 13. Safe conduct, lucky number 13. So there's a look at that selection order. We'll leave it up for a bit. And uh, we'll give you guys a chance to just, you know, think about what you'd like to do in terms of your post position selection obviously have a couple in mind because in case you want one that goes so give us a few seconds i'm going to write these down then i'm going to put kyla on the hot seat so give me one second right here
Okay, once again, just to reiterate, the loading process, it is one, six, two, seven, three, eight, four, nine, five, ten, six, eleven, seven, twelve, thirteen on its own. I know some of you are a little bit confused, so hopefully you have it. And once again, you can see the selection order. So we'll check in with the connections in a second, but now it's Kyla time, so come on up. So ladies and gentlemen, Kyla Sanchez. We're still on this loading thing, by the way. Hold on. Okay, Julie Bell's on the situation. Because, yeah, she pointed out a good thing. If It, it can't be 1-6, because then you're kind of loading the six horse twice. So she's on that. I'll let her speak with Ian Ross and get that figured out. In the meantime, I will speak with Kyla. So first of all, let's start with a question I think everybody wants answered. Did you really sleep on a cardboard bed? Is it really? What, I, all the stories I've heard in that Olympic village, I mean, are they true? Yes, the beds were cardboard, um, thick cardboard, but I walked in and I jumped on it because I thought if I broke it, they'd wheel me in a new maybe wooden bed, but they didn't. Oh. Didn't okay. break. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> wow, okay, so it is true. Okay. To the more serious question now, in terms of the experience, because you've been to world championships before, yeah. this was your first Olympic experience, and it was anything but just an ordinary one, obviously, with COVID involved. Yes, yeah, so there were restrictions, uh, one building per country. It was still a great experience. It seemed somewhat normal once I got there. I've been to a multi-sport games before, and uh, yeah, it was nice to be around other people. Fair enough, fair enough. Now, you're an athlete, obviously. We've got athletes that are out on the track. We've got uh, human ones, obviously, as well. But you're kind of like a thoroughbred in the pool. because, And our horses, by the way, they do swim as well, so even more like you. Talk about the training regimen, because, I mean, early mornings, just like the horses, what does it take if there are any aspiring athletes out there, not just in the pool, but overall, what does it take? Because you started at the age of four, so that's dedication. But what does it take to get to the top? Um, it takes hard work, yes, and it takes love for the sport. You have to love what you do, and it's, people say it a lot, but it's true. Otherwise, you don't grow the interest, and you don't want to spend the time. But I, I swim nine times a week. I Ooh. do three dry land training sessions and three weight sessions on top of that as well. So I, I had quite a busy year, but with COVID, that was all I was doing. Pool home, pool home, pool home. My group had gotten really big. Everyone had flown to Toronto to train with my group because my coach is pretty renowned. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's paid off. It's, it's paid off. It's, it's definitely paid off. Now, in terms of your successes in the pool, we've talked about this. The four by one, you were the lead swimmer. And then we switched things up for the 400 medley. You're now the anchor leg swimmer. How does that, you know, differ in terms of, I, I, I get it, one goes first, one goes last, but Maybe talk about the mental approach, the physical approach. So when you dive in first, uh, it's a lot about staying calm. Uh, when you have a lot of girls walking out because there's four per relay, eight lanes, it's easy to get psyched out and it's easy to overthink things. And by the time you dove in and swam 50 meters, half of the race, you could have spent that time nervous or out of breath already, tense through the chest. and. That does take a toll, of you, toll on you in the next 50 meters where you have to touch strong for the next person and the rest of your relay to dive in. I actually do like the first leg because I walk out and I swim my race and I'm done and I just watch for the, the rest of it. But for the anchor leg, um, staying calm is more about in walking out and seeing the first three legs of, oh my goodness, I have to do that next and I have to finish the race. And, However I touch is what we play. So I think that's a lot of pressure on someone. And I think if you guys have seen swimming, Penny is a really great anchor. So I swam the prelim 
and I tried to fill her shoes, and it's about staying calm as well, but an even better finish. Well, speaking of Penny, that's a nice segue. She's 21 and already the most decorated Olympian. Yes. I mean, that, that's crazy to say that at that age, she, you know, theoretically could have another four Olympics in her if she wanted to, but um, maybe just talk about the experience of being around her just because you're going to learn so much from her, not just in the pool, but out of it as well. Yeah, so I started training with Penny the September she got back from the Rio Games. And yeah, she, I definitely learned a lot from her. There's definitely swimming IQ in the same way that there's horse racing IQ and different sports of knowing what works and what doesn't. And she helped me a lot through the start of my professional career. Did you have an idol growing up in terms of swimming? Or I don't any think sport? I had one in particularly. Okay. Um, yeah, I just always wanted to work my hardest in the pool. Honestly, it was a lot of just swimming, and I didn't realize how much it took over my life until this point, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, uh, go ahead, have a round of applause, sure. Any teacher experiences like Penny, because it's been well documented, she had that high school teacher that said, hell, school or swimming, Penny, pick one. And uh, I, I think she made the right choice, but when did swimming get for, on, for you on your radar? Probably once I started training with her group in the September of 2016. All right, final question. I know you're not a handicapper, I get it, but I know you probably, you know, size up the competition already. Who do you like in Sunday's big race? If I was going to put you on the spot, which a I lot of the know. names have stood out to me. And um, my guts is. They're hungry. They're hungry, Kyla. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, number five, keep grinding. Keep grinding. All right. Well, Joshua would like that. He's only 17. Oh. He's only 17, and he's the owner of the horse. How cool is that? That's pretty cool. So he's cool. a young star just like you. Ladies and gentlemen, Kyla Sanchez. Thank you, everyone. And I think I've got the math figured out. It's one seven, right? So yeah, somewhere my math teacher is cringing right now. But one seven two eight three nine four ten five eleven six twelve thirteen on the bottom. I'll wait for Kyla to sit down and then ask her to come back up. Kyla, I need you back up here. So <laughs> no, no, you can sit for a bit. Okay. So what we need now are the connections to come on down and let us know what they're going to select. Selection number one goes to trainer Sidatar, Team Stronic with Riptide Rock. So I know I saw, where is Uncle Sid? You, uh, who's coming up for you? Get all my papers in line here. So we'll have you over there, hands free. Riptide Rock. Team Stronic, of course, has won this race a bunch of times. Uh, four, to be exact. Homebred, <laughs> ridden by Davy Moran. Well, Spien, what do we got? What you got? You take position seven. Lucky number seven. Any reason why you pick seven? Well, in middle, you know, he's, he, he don't have no speed to come off it, you know, so we forget. At what point did you say to the connections and let's give this race a shot? Because obviously that last one going three quarters, yeah. that's a tough stretch out, you know, right. going a mile yeah. and a quarter. So maybe talk about the decision and how do you think he's going to handle it? Well, he, he run down south, you know, he run four goal, mile and 60, you know, it looks like he can get hand on the distance, no problem. And he's doing really good and we'll give him a shot. All right. Well, Interesting, he's the only horse in the field that has hit the ticket on all three surfaces already. So I know I'm looking f farther ahead than I should, but best of luck. Appreciate Thank it, Sid. Sid Attard, trainer of Riptide Rock. Post number seven. All right, who is next up? All right. Next up, we got Ivan Delos crew, H.C. Holiday. This is one of a bunch of horses for trainer. Here comes Miss Delos. All right. Come on down and let us know. Colleen. All right. Lay, us, lay it on us, boss. What do you got? We 
You're going for lucky number five. Colleen says lucky number five. All right. Now, can I ask you about H.C. Holiday? Are you okay? To... You can ask me. All right. About I like Holiday. it. She is game. So, uh, Dad's had a bunch of close calls in this race. So, sorry, right? say that again. I said Ivan's had a bunch of close calls in this race. Yep. In terms of this horse, how excited are you about the opportunity to maybe take that next step? So we're pretty excited. My father's been in this business over 40 years, as everybody knows, and I think we've had four shots at this plate. We've hit the board three times. We have three <laughs> seconds, yes. and uh, this is what we covet, right? Everybody wants to win on their home turf and their home ground. It means everything to us to win uh, the plate. And what's also exciting is this is the son of Amy's holiday, who came second in the plate and hit the board across the Triple Crown. So it's <laughs> exciting for us to see our homebreds and the horses that we breed. This is four generations of Tall Oaks Farm uh, breeding that's gone into this horse. So we're so excited for HC Holiday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, best of luck. Go get them, yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> Team Delos with HC Holiday, uh, still technically a maiden. And uh, hey, maiden has won this race before. I know it's been a while, scatter the gold back in, I wanna say 2000. And, uh, Luis Contreras will look to get his first plate with a non-female. He won in 2011 with Inglorious and 2017 with Holy Helena. All right, next up, take a chance. And this is the perfectly named horse for this year. Hello, Catherine Day Phillips. What do you got for us? Hello. Take a chance? Hello, it is time to take a chance. Yes, let's talk about take a chance. What number? Number four. Number four, okay, I'm gonna write this down. Take a chance, well, I mean, why not, right? I mean, it's that type of year. What did you think of that last race? Obviously, it, you saw enough in it to give this horse a shot. I think he's just developing, he's just really improving. Uh, he's improved a lot since he's come up to Canada. He enjoys the, the fresh air and he's liking uh, being here. All right, and um, you've had success at the Queen's Plate, obviously not the ultimate, but Close, twice. Exactly, close, twice. Exactly, exactly. close so, twice. It's time to get it done. Now, in terms of Kevin Nichols, he's having a career year, and uh, you guys are a budding success. He's riding well. He's ridden our, been riding our horse as well, and uh, we're looking forward to, all of us are looking forward to our first plate win. All right. No pressure, Kevin. Okay. Just saying. <laughs> Thank you very much, Catherine. Thank you, Jason. Take a chance. Post number four. A pretty cool friends and family affair with the Fergusons, the Andersons as well. Bill Carr, pretty cool, his first horse and uh, gets to the big dance. All right, let's move on. Selecting fourth, Raroma. Here comes Kevin Attard. Money for Row. And I remember back in the day, it was a rarity when a filly would take on the boys in the Queen's Plate. Now it's almost automatic that the winner is gonna, you know, go. So uh, she is here, Mr. Attard. She's here and we're excited, so. Yeah, we're going to take number six. Post six for Money for Row. So obviously, when I spoke to you after winning the Oaks, you said you would speak with the connections and decide whether or not to put up that $25,000. Uh, I guess that decision has now been made. Yeah, we waited uh, to see how she came out of the race. Uh, she seemed to handle the race really well, the Canadian Oaks. And, Closer to the mic. Um, yeah, so, perfect. Yeah, so she, uh, she had a good work in the interim, and uh, she's been doing really well. She's in the feed tub, and she's... Uh, you know, it seems like she's ready to fire again. All right. Well, we'll talk to you again, I'm pretty sure. All right, sounds good. Kevin Attard, money for a row. For a Roma stable. Justin signed, by the way, uh, number one at this meet. Right there, in terms of money. Nobody has done it better. This is his 10th plate mount. Of course, won it in 2012 with Straight of Dova. Another Attard. The Attard family tradition. Tino, Joshua, which one? Come on down for keep grinding. Joshua, what a story, 17 years of age, and uh, a chance to, uh, we keep a lot of stats, but I I'm not sure if we have stats on who is the youngest owner ever to win a Queen's Plate, but it is potentially there. Well, Josh? Uh, we're gonna go with post position number eight. Post eight for keep grinding. So, now I've heard rumors, is this horse named after, is it a hockey player, or, I know you bought the horse, but I'm just saying, do you know what the name? Uh, I didn't name it, I, I didn't name it really yeah. after a hockey player. I just named it uh, towards myself when I play hockey, something that motivates me, and that's why I picked the name. So last year, when this horse was able to break through with that maiden score, I know you got excited, remember you telling your grandpa, uh, Tino, 
what's grandpa in uh, Maltese? Nanu. Nanu, okay, almost like Italian nonna. Okay, so Nanu. You said um, we might have a Queen's Plate horse. How excited are you at the prospects of, you know, winning a race that, you know, your dad hasn't been able to win, your grandfather, your uncle, you could be the first. Yeah, I'm very excited and also very nerve-wracking, that's for <laughs> sure. Uh, but I know I uh, keep grinding, he'll show up. Uh, he always tries, if you watch all his races, never gives up and uh, I know on Sunday he'll show up. And that was a good last race against Open Company as well in the Marines. So best of luck. Thanks for doing this. Thank you. All right, Joshua Attard. <laughs> Rafael Hernandez won this race in 2015 with Shaman Ghost. And uh, third last year with Clayton. He gets his, I do believe, seventh plate try. All right, there he is again. This time for the Minnesota connection of Al and Bill Allwelling. We know they're watching as well. Really appreciate you guys. Americans that are longtime supporters of Canadian racing. All right, Kev. Hadass is going to go through the uh, three hole. Three hole. Okay. Hadass at number three. Um, this horse was the uh, fourth favorite in the winter book. I guess now number one with the top three being out. That last race, the Marine, is, is just kind of odd. I mean, he's not known for being a front runner, but it's almost like nobody wanted the lead. Yeah, it was an oddly run race. I think he's kind of fallen off the radar a little bit because of it, but. Uh, this horse has a world of talent, and uh, you know, I mean, we're really excited to be in this position with him, and uh, we're hoping for uh, some racing luck and uh, a good trip. Obviously, the mile and a quarter, it's a question I could ask everybody, but um, how do you think he'll handle it? Yeah, he, he's indicated to me that he should, you know. Uh, obviously, we're, you know, we're hoping to get him relaxed early, and I think that'll be the key. All right, Kevin Attard, back again, this time with Hadassah. Post three. Moving on, go take charge. Brita Hayes, come on Brita, special time for her as she gets her first ever Queen's Plate horse. Um, Brita, what do you got? I, we're going for number nine. Number nine, says Brita Hayes with the maiden, go take charge. Talk about that decision, because obviously a non-winning horse on the biggest yeah. three-year-old stage in Canada. Yeah. You got to come closer to the mic, please. You're only getting one shot with a three-year-old, so uh, and he he'll go a route of ground. So we're hoping for the best. Yeah, the lineage is there. A half to Camp Creek pulled yeah. off the upset yeah. in 2016 Breeders' yeah. Stakes, and how special is this for Garland with you? Because oh, just been in a, you know. It's big. You know, he's a big owner, puts a lot of money into the business, and uh, hopefully things will work out right. All right, best of luck. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much. All right, Brita Hayes. Just her fourth stakes horse, Sahin Savachi made his Queen's Plate debut last year with FF Rocket. All right, we are getting there. Up next, Dan Samoa. All right, Team Samson. Special year for them, obviously. We know things are winding down. Samson's won this race five times, looking for their first since 2009. I have the Leopard. The answer is? We're going to go with number 10. Number 10. All right, number 10 for Dan Samoa. Any reason why number 10 or just kind of going with what's left? Um, well, you, you know, I think we'd rather be uh, outside than inside. It is a little bit of going with what's left. But he's a pretty versatile horse. Um, so I think uh, it's a little bit better for Patrick to be able to sort out a trip from there than the two. What did you make of that last race? It was a pretty good one between himself and Harlan Estate. Yeah, I, I think the last race he maybe got a little lonely out there on the lead and kind of was looking around and, um, you know, no uh, knock on Harlan Estate. That horse ran a great race there, but, you know, I, I think he got a, maybe a little bit lazy and uh, didn't... Kind of snuck up on you? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that was a nice synthetic debut, so uh, another step forward and uh, could be right there. Thank All you. right. Appreciate it. Samson Farms, dance some more. He's talked about uh, 50 years in racing, Samson, and of course, uh, this horse is, I'm not very good at lineage, thank God Chad Rosen was here, because he's all over that stuff, but uh, third and fourth dams, that, that's all I'm going to say, we'll leave it at that, third and fourth dams, dance through the dawn, dance smartly, so that is some serious lineage there with that one, all right, Avoman, I see the guys all decked out in the Avoman hats, I like it, I like it. All right, we got the combination of Jim and Graham Bruce. All right, what do we got? And we got our D-Mac man. With, uh, with Avil Man, we're going to take the 11 hole. 11 hole, okay. Well, how good does this feel for you? 27 
Man, you look good. 27 years of training. I couldn't believe it. Oil of Olay works, man. It really does. Um, and, and you're getting a plate horse. Yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a dream come true. Um, I started out buying a $1,000 horse. A uh, lot of long days. Come closer. A uh, lot of long days. And now I get to, uh, to hang out with all you people and uh, play in the biggest dance there is. So I'm quite excited. What did you make of the plate trial? I know that many of us have documented the fact that the filly went two seconds faster. Full two seconds. But... That was almost like a morning gallop that turned into a sprint because there's only four horses in that field. We didn't need to emphasize full two seconds, two seconds. No, okay, two seconds. all right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'm contractually obligated yeah. just to you know, tell you um, what's here. But. The race seemed like it went real fast the way we were screaming and yelling. But, uh, right. Yeah, I mean, the, the way everything's set up, um, I mean, they walked the dog up front. Exactly. We all run the last streets of a mile real quick, and we all got to scream, so it was, a, it was a good feeling for sure. All right, and you've been with the Bruces a long time, so how good is that feel for you to be with them and get this opportunity? Oh, 100%. Uh, great guys. We have a lot of fun when we come to the races. They love the game. They love the horses. Um, yeah, it's a, they're, they're in it for the horses, and, and the, the money is secondary, so if we could get the big check, I, it might become the primary thing, but yeah, we're pretty excited. Avocados for everybody, right? If we win this race. All right, perfect. Don McCray. Avo man. Trying to become the first trial winner since Big Red Mike in 2010 to go on to get it done. Antonio Gallardo, by the way, getting his first Queen's Plate mount. All right, Harlan Estate. Harlan Estate up next. We're going to call on Kevin Attard to come back up. American Connections. Eric Johnson of the Colorado Avalanche part of this ownership group. Kind of cool, had horses before like Landeskog and McWinnon. Go ahead, Kev. Harlan Estates gonna break from the two. Number two for Harlan Estates. So, you get a chance to rebut team uh, Samson who said, you know, you kind of snuck up on them, which might have been the case, but are you looking forward to the, I guess, rematch again with uh, yeah, Dan Samo? Obviously, you have to respect their horse. He's, uh, oh, for sure. You know, he's a, he's a good horse. Uh, it's an open race. I think anybody's got a, a good chance at it. And, uh, you know, right now, uh, you know what I mean? My horses are prepared as best as they can be. And uh, we're just going to hope for a, a good rest of the week and, uh, you know, have some fun on Sunday. Obviously, this horse was sent to you with this goal in mind. Um, first two races on synthetic, obviously, he's taken to it. Yeah, I've been really proud of this horse. He's handled uh, both races really well. Uh, first race, he kind of was, you know, a little late kind of switching leads there. Uh, might have cost him a little bit, but he kind of put it together last time. The track was really slow that day. Uh, you know, I thought he had to come from far behind and on, on a dead track, and, you know, he, uh, he got up in the nick of time. So he's a horse that's just going to fall out of the race. Hopefully there's an honest pace in front, and uh, we'll do some running late. All right, go get him. Kevin Attard with his fourth starter. Wow, four horses in the Queen's Plate. Just happy to get one. Kazushi Kimura, by the way, will ride. He currently leads the meet with 46 victories. His third try at the plate. Couple of sixth place finishes thus far. Title forces. Samson Farms, Gail Cox, come on down. All right. What do you got? I know that you don't have much left, but uh, what are we going to start we're gonna, from? We're going to go with 12. 12. All right. Post 12 for title forces. Um, had that win streak snap last time out. Uh, how is he doing in the interim and what did you make of that last effort? Uh, he's doing great. He's worked really well coming into this race. I thought the last race he just was a little bit wound up. He wasn't like his usual self. He didn't settle. And uh, he certainly is doing well after that race. Obviously special time for Samson. We know all about the dispersal. For you, you've been with Samson, I mean, a long time. Goes back to the show jumping days, right? So what does it mean for you to get this type of opportunity with Samson at the Queen's Plate? Well, I, I think it's uh, just something that's so exciting. And I have been with him for a long time and changed careers from show jumping to racetrack. And uh, it's uh, an honor to train for them. You know, and it's very sad to see them getting out of the business, but uh, we still have some time left. That's right. And you can go out with a big bang. Appreciate it, Gail. I know you don't like the mic, so <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Gail Cox, <laughs> trainer of Tidal Forces. All right. And then there were two. Team Dirtsky. 
Team Dirtsky. Carlos Grant in the house. Pretty cool. I, I was always trying to figure out with Chakara how they came up with that name. So it's a brother and sister team of Annalisa and Brett Delmas. Brett's kids, Jesse, Carver, and Raven. You take the first two letters of each, you get Chakara. So that's pretty cool. Carlos, you've been here before in terms of grooming a Queen's Plate horse. Now you're training one. Yes, sir. All right, Dirtsky, what post? I'm at zip post 13. Lucky number 13 for Dirtsky. So, talk about the decision in terms of, you know, trying the Queen's Plate. Well, he's a nice horse, and we decided to give him the shot because he proved that he Come closer to the mic, please. Yeah. He proved he belonged in this company, and he had a good trip in the plate trail, just unfortunately get hampered. So we decided to give him the shot. There's only one chance probably to get at it, so we decided to go here. He is proven around two turns. How are the nerves? Because obviously, I know we're still a good few days away. Oh but... yeah, the nerves up for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, everyone. All right, well, best of luck on Sunday. Thank Thanks you, for Jason. doing this. All right, Carlos Grant. Getting his first Queen's Plate starter, Jason Hoyt as well. Jason will get his first attempt at Queen's Plate glory. All right, well, I guess there's only uh, one left. We uh, potentially saved the best for last. Safe conduct. Who's coming on down? Do you, you want to? Come on down anyways. I want to talk to you. We'll talk to the breeder, Mitch Kirstner. So he'll make it official, and I'll ask him a few questions about safe conduct, who I think... Okay, and we got the trainer on the line too. So there you go, take some of the pressure off you. Yes, we'll talk to Phil in a second. Okay, so Mitch, congratulations. Obviously owners are very important in this game, paying the bills, breeders, without them, we have no horses. So for you, breeding this horse, I know he's been racing solely in the States thus far, but what does it mean as a breeder to have a horse in the Queen's Plate? Oh, it means everything, it's just, uh unbelievable honor and privilege and uh, dream come true. I want to congratulate Phil, sir, and uh, the wonderful Vukovic family at, at Wellspring for the great job they've done with him and wish them the best of luck on the weekend and wish everybody all the best. We all have somebody in our family to thank for getting us into this great game and for you, your grandfather, no longer with us, but we know he's still watching. Yeah. So how special, you know, m I guess even more special would it be to win this one with him in mind? It mean everything, really. He loved coming to the races and uh, called a lot of the older um, trainers back in the day friends. And we used to come to the track and sit in the kitchen. And uh, he's the one that got me started. And uh, it would mean the world to me, really. So it's really great, great, grateful to be here. All right. You've tasted Oak success. Yes. Maybe you got the plate part of the double as well. Congratulations. Thank you very much. All right. Mitch Kersner, breeder of Safe Conduct. We do have Phil Serpe on the line. Uh, Phil, thanks for joining us. A uh, quick question in terms of this horse, uh, never been on synthetic. I know the horse has, you know, trained well. That last prep on the grass looked pretty good with Erat Ortiz as well. But how do you think this horse will handle the uh, surface? I know you don't have the answer per se, but what are you thinking? I mean, it is the, uh, you know, the unanswered question. So um, he did not really care for slop, which was pretty obvious in his uh, two races back wore a very soft turf. So um we're hoping of course that he'll like the, the synthetic track um you know he's a horse that likes to train and really loves his job um so we're uh, we'll we'll keep our fingers crossed and i uh, hope everything works out for the best and i want to thank everybody for um not putting any pressure on me by having to pick a post position um i appreciate <laughs> um post position one so thank you <laughs> <laughs> now, this is your second Queen's Plate starter, your first since 2003. This horse, does he have a preferred style? Looks like he can show some speed, he can sit just off of it. Looks like he's quite uh, versatile. You know, he is. Uh, um, he has speed if we need it. Um, look, uh, that's going to be up to Irad. Um, you know, we have a very dangerous weapon on his back. And uh, I'm just going to leave that up to him. Uh, obviously, it depends what happens at the break. Um, but, um, you know, the horse is trained, I rides the driver, um, I trust him. I think he's probably one of the top five with due respect to so many other riders, riders in the country. And, um, uh, that's going to be his call. All right. Well, best of luck on Sunday. Thanks for joining us and, uh, go get him with safe conduct.
Well, thanks very much. All right, Phil Serpe, and he spoke of Erod Ortiz. He is the three-time defending Eclipse Award-winning rider. So, yeah, he can uh, horseback. Gets his first ever Queen's Plate mount. So, ladies and gentlemen, your field of 13 for Sunday's $1 million Queen's Plate. Just going to uh, clean things up now in terms of Sunday. There are a bunch of things going on. Uh, Ladies of the Lawn, want to mention that as well. It's a, a three-part series with uh, some turf races. There's a point system, all in benefit of Rethink Breast Cancer. So appreciate that from Woodbine Entertainment. Now, in terms of the day itself, I want to let you know the doors open at 1225, or at 1130, sorry. Post time is 1225. There's still outdoor seating, general admission as well. Uh, Ticketmaster.ca, queensplate.com. Tickets are going fast, so make sure you do that as soon as you can. Social media, whenever you're using that, use the hashtag QP21. So, Robert Geller is somewhere in the house. I know I saw him earlier. Robert, are you here? Oh, there he is. All right, so Robert Geller is going to come on up and put a nice little exclamation mark on the day. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for the voice of Canadian Thoroughbred Racing, Mr. Robert Geller. Come on down. All right, handsome, what do you got for us in terms of this year's race? Uh, first of all, well, well, I won't ask you for a pick just yet, but you, you come on now. You overlook the best view in all of sports, and we do a segment on the show called The View from the Booth. Talk about just the vantage point you get each and every day of seeing these amazing athletes. Well, it's an amazing track. Woodbine is such a picturesque racetrack. It's a beautiful racetrack. To have the inner turf is such a bonus. To have the E.P. Taylor is magnificent. And to have such a great main track that's so competitive and such thrilling finishes, especially this year. I've never seen so many photos in my life. But that's what racing's about. So for me, uh, the moment is everything. Split seconds are absolutely everything. And so is, the preparation is, is, is very important, but in the end, it all goes out the window, but the window tells you everything. You look out and you go, I have to feel it. I have to be in, in the race, you know what I mean? Just like a jockey, you have to go stride by stride, and you never know. You pick so many winners just with the really? eyes. You do, oh, with your oh, eyes. Oh, with the eyes, yes, not yeah. with the form. <laughs> Sometimes that's even better, because sometimes yes. what's on the program page doesn't necessarily translate to the track. I feel like when you watch the riders and when you watch the horses in sync in a race, you can feel how much is left. You can tell how they're traveling. And to me, that's one of the joys of race calling, that you can actually get into the vibe of what you feel uh, might end up being the result early in a race. Early in a race tells you what might happen later in a race. I won't put you on the spot in terms of a pick. I have no idea, but I will say this. The okay. rail has been golden this year. The rail has been very live. Okay. It has. I've seen that in the finishes, yes. Fair enough. Now, even though you've been doing this for years, you yes. still get, I don't want to say, well, I guess nervous anticipation, but it's a good nervous, right? Well, you need adrenaline. You have yeah, to have some, some like of this. it. Of course, there is some, you know, there's always little things in the last minute that can throw you off. So it's about putting a little buffer there between you and the crowd, but at the same time, I must say when Money for Row won the other day, the crowd, the incredible atmosphere from the fans was so tangible, you could hear it. Same with Mighty Heart. So those things you want to be part of. You want to feed on that energy, but you don't want to be consumed by it. So it's a fine balance, and you just never know. I mean, every race is unique, every race is different, but this is such a special race. And I've had, honestly, in the last couple of days, people from international destinations asking me about it, and I think that's really important for the Queen's Plate, that we have an international profile, because it is the longest running stakes race in North America consecutively, and it's always a very good race, and I love calling it, so I've, it's a great honor for me. Can I get a pick now? No, just joking. I, I wanted to no know, though, seriously, <laughs> only a field of 13. I say only because you deal with bigger fields at times. Well, you, have. you know, it depends, you know, on the size of the race isn't so much in terms of the, the numbers because you can, have short fields that are so you can have short fields that are so tough, and right. you can have runaway leaders who control the pace in a 13-horse field, and so sometimes... 
It is very hard to tell, but I think this is a very balanced field. I think it's a great number because it's not going to be too much interference for horses who are tiring because, you know, the mile and a quarter is going to be tempting some of them. But ultimately, it's, it's a very um, intriguing field in form, and there are horses who are going to be really on the bubble, and that will be their day. And I think we're looking for a horse who's ready to pop with their best performance because I've noticed one thing from the runnings, and Danny has called so many, what I've noticed is I haven't yet called a deep closer win the race. I haven't called a horse from a long way back ever in the time I've been here. They've always been able to hit the pace, but then they've always had to show this burst at the end. And those are the two things I'll be looking for in the form line. A All horse right. that can attend the pace to some extent and then finish it off quickly. Riders are listening, right? By the way, Patrick forgot to mention his 22nd Queen's Plate mount, so he's... And he's uh, a superb rider. Yeah, and has a couple in his back pocket. Robert, always a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Best Thank you, luck. Jason. Enjoy Sunday. Thank you. Our track announcer, the voice of Canadian Thoroughbred Racing, Robert Geller. So that's about it for now. I want to thank everybody who made today possible. Don't want to name names because I don't want to forget anybody. A huge thank you, though, to our Olympian, Kyla Sanchez in the house. She will be back with a bunch of other Olympians. Yes, round of applause on Sunday. And uh, speaking of Sunday, so many ways to watch and wager. We talked about the Dark Horse Bets app being ready to go for the weekend, HPI TV. If you can't make it on track, we're going to have the broadcast 90 minutes, 4.30 until 6 on CTV as well as TSN. On track, Jeff Bratt, Monique Vag will have you covered. And of course, Robert Geller with the play-by-play. -play. We are far from done. Enjoy breakfast. And as always, thank you for the company. Great to see you. Please have the riders please go outside, photo op with Kyla. Remember to check online as well in terms of the auction for the uh, ladies on the lawn. And I'll get you the odds a little bit later on. Ernie Perry, our morning line odds maker, will get those numbers for you. And once we have them, I'll pass them over.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have the odds. Just want to update you on the odds. Ernie Perry has given us the numbers, so here's a look at the field. Number one, safe conduct with Erod Ortiz at 5 to 1. Harlan Estate with Kazushi Kimura, 10 to 1. Gary Boulanger, winner of the 01 event with Dance Through the Dawn, will ride Hadassah at 10 to 1. Take a chance with Kevin Nichols, 20 to 1. HC Holiday, Luis Contreras at 15 to 1. Money for Roe, the second choice with Justin Stein riding at 9 to 2. Riptide Rock, number 7, Davey Moran to ride at 6 to 1. The 8, Keep Grinding, Rafael Hernandez, the race favorite at 4 to 1. Go Take Charge, Sahin Savachi at 30 to 1. Dance Some Mo, 12 to 1 with Patrick Husbands aboard. Avo Man at 8 to 1 with Antonio Gallardo. Tattle Forces with the 07 plate winner, Emma Wilson, aboard at 12 to 1. And Dirtsky rounding out the field at 30 to 1 with Jason Hoyt. So there's a look at the odds for Queen's Plate number 162. Thank you.